wonderful to have you with us this morning on this September the 6th, Labor Day weekend, and we are very pleased that you have joined us wherever you are in the country or the world. I give thanks this day for Bill Dusterwald, for his videography skills, to Saunders Allen, to our Kelly Young, and to Brandon Shaw McKnight and Christopher Chappelle, who are our musicians this day. I also give thanks to you for your continued faithfulness. And please stay tuned. We hope that pretty soon we might be able to send out an alert that we could do uh, an outdoor service of some kind. So read your emails. One came out this week. If you are not on that list and you would like to be, we are happy to add you or you can add yourself if you go on the parish website. So we welcome you again to this worship this morning and we continue with hymn 401, The God of Abraham Prays.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Romans 13, 8 to 14. Don't be in debt to anyone except for the obligation to love each other. Whoever loves another person has fulfilled the law. The commandments, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't desire what others have, and any other commandments are all summed up in one word. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Love doesn't do anything wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is what fulfills the law. As you do all this, you know what time it is. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your sleep. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first had faith. The night is almost over, and the day is near. So let's get rid of the actions that belong to the darkness and put on the weapons of light. Let's behave appropriately as people who live in the day, not in partying and get drunk, not in sleeping around an obscene behavior, not in fighting and obsession. Instead, dress yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and don't plan to indulge your selfish desires. The word of the Lord.
The Gospel reading this morning is Matthew 18, 15 to 20. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and correct them when you are alone together. If they listen to you, then you've won over your brother or sister. But if they won't listen, take with you one or two others, so that every word may be established by the mouth of two or three witnesses. But if they still won't pay attention, report it to the church. If they won't pay attention even to the church, treat them as you would a Gentile and tax collector. I assure that whatever you fasten on earth will be fastened on heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. Again, I assure you that if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, then my Father who is in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. First of all, I will address that gospel probably in next week's email. I did not go there today. Today I would like to speak to you from the Romans reading and from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Don't be in debt to anyone except for the obligation to love each other. Whoever loves another person has fulfilled the law. Love, love, love. This week I googled the word love. 14, 000, sorry, 14 billion 620 hits. Yes, well over 14 billion. So, what does the word love mean, really? Definitions vary from strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties, as in love for one's child or spouse, affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interests, as in, I love my old classmates, warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion, as in, I love my beach place, or I love that restaurant, Love may thrive in, as in, roses love sunlight. And in tennis, it actually means a score of zero. So, it seems that love has a very wide range, from affection to sexual expression to compassion to zero. Of course, most of us associate the word love with a warm, fuzzy, passionate emotion. Yet if you've been committed to another person for any length of time, you know that that warm, fuzzy, passionate emotion you first felt settles into something else over time. It might be deep, but it is not always euphoric. Sometimes committed love means you tough things out in tough times because of your commitment, not because you feel warm and fuzzy, right? I want to reflect about love in a couple of ways this morning. And to do first, I want to step back and look over the last few months. This year we've had a record breaking number of hurricanes in the United States to date. There probably will be more. And Hurricane Laura left at least 24 dead. The power grid there needs a complete rebuild. According to the Lake Charles, Louisiana mayor, it would cost at least $12 billion to repair the massive damage. The mayor, Nick Hunter, has begged Americans not to forget them. In other words, he might just as well have said to us all, we need you guys to show us some love. We all stand in the midst of great need. The hurricane is only one example. According to a recent New York Times article, and I quote, a shadow of hunger looms over the United States. In the pandemic economy, nearly one in eight households 
doesn't have enough to eat. The lockdown, with its epic lines at food banks, has revealed what was hidden in plain sight, that the struggle to make food last long enough and to get food that's healthful, what experts call food insecurity, is a persistent one for millions of Americans. Because of this pandemic, millions of average Americans are at hunger's edge." End quote. So, it seems clear that love in this situation is not warm or fuzzy or intensely romantic. The need for this kind of love is strong, compassionate, a kind of love that may go on for a long while. This kind of compassion is lived out in real time in real ways. As Paul says, owe oh, no one anything except to love one another. So on another front, love seems to be needed for sure in Portland, Oregon or Kenosha, Wisconsin. So much love needed now. In the past week I thought about today's reading from Romans and wondered how it connects to the sights and sounds around the United States and beyond our shores. Perhaps it has to do with one human being's connection with another human being, especially in difficult times. Perhaps it has to do with how Christians attempt to live out what Jesus taught us. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Now the Apostle Paul has been brought up in the Jewish faith. He has experienced a dramatic conversion to Christianity. Paul knows both the teachings of Jesus and the foundational teachings of the Hebrew Scriptures. Somewhere between 54 and 58 of the Common Era, Paul writes to the Christians in Rome and he lists four representative commandments from the Torah, no adultery, no killing, no stealing, no coveting, don't want what belongs to someone else, in other words, that are undeniably critical for life and community. And Paul insists that all these commandments are summed up in one commandment from Leviticus 19:18. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Further, Paul counsels these Christians that love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of all the law. So first by the ancient Hebrew code of ethics, and then the Christian code of ethics, Paul commands us to love one another. Now, there are two inherent dangers in thinking about this code of love. First, as I noted a few minutes ago, we see the great need of people in this world right now. Even a cursory read of today's news can send us into depression. We feel the weight of burdens we cannot possibly bear. There are too many people, there are too many needs. There is too much death, destruction, anxiety, anger. We cannot fix everything. So, the weight of the burden of compassion and love can paralyze us because we can't fix it. The second danger is that we will buy into that superficial and saccharine profession of love of the whole world, a love that never manages to find its way into the nitty-gritty of everyday life. The old Beatles song comes to mind, All you need is love, they sang. I do not think this little ditty would comfort the folks who stand in the midst of destroyed homes and businesses in Lake Charles, Louisiana. I do not think happy songs like that would comfort those when sons, brothers, fathers have been killed in the recent violence in our cities, particularly those of color. I don't think this song would amuse anyone who's struggling when their jobs were furloughed because of COVID and then who got a recent order not to come back at all. 
I doubt the Beatles could comfort all the families who are now struggling with food insecurity like they never did. And those who feel ashamed about going to ask for help at places like Lars or Elizabeth House or the various drop-off locations in our area. Love may be all someone needs, but it's not the kind of love like saccharine, fuzzy, warm, emotional. So, what is this love your neighbor thing all about? Paul says that Christian love is not some warm, fuzzy emotion. Love is a way of life. Sometimes a determined will that makes you stand stubbornly against any romanticized notion of love. And this way of life begins for Christians the day we're baptized into the Christian faith. Why? The invisible yet indelible sign of the cross traced on our foreheads at baptism changes us because it moves us from a secular realm into a spiritual one. The only way we show the world that change, that transformation after the oil dries, is to live in love in a way that says, I am different. I belong to the risen Christ. He showed me the best way to live and love. This love that is as strong as death, as the Song of Songs puts it, is different from superficial, sentimental love. It challenges me to behave differently, not just on Sunday, but every day, every day of my life, in every area of my life. It doesn't matter where we are, or how we feel on any given day. Jesus calls us not simply to say we are Christians, but to act like Christians. This is not easy. There is always death and destruction in the world, whether from hurricane, flood, earthquake, war, or violence in cities. We will always have financial difficulties, unemployment, pain, illness, disease, we will always have difficult people who challenge us. Even in the body of Christ, we will always have our ups and downs, conflicts that challenge the practice of this deep theology of love, yet it is in precisely in the middle of conflict, death, destruction, and disease where we are to show we belong to Christ, Otherwise, how will anyone ever be able to, or want to be a Christian? We should always keep in mind Mahatma Gandhi's musing. I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. It is true that living out the commandments of Torah and Jesus it's not easy. Every person we encounter is not lovable, not even the one we see in the mirror. Yet we must act as if. We must act as if that person we see in the mirror, or the person at the family reunion, or the person in church, or the person in the office, or the person tweeting or on Facebook, Jesus himself. <clears throat> yes, I know, it's very difficult, almost impossible. Yet if we believe we are made in the image of God, that is our ethical code. That is how we are to act. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. This week I invite you to think about someone you detest, or at least someone you disagree with. Wonder what would happen if we prayed for those people. What would happen if you acted as if you cared deeply about that individual? If you wondered what it's like to be in their skin? Maybe if you considered that they may have had an abusive childhood and were terribly damaged by that reality. 
What if you pretended you were walking in their shoes? Act as if. If you act as if, the person who most needs to be changed may be changed. Shaped more deeply in the image of God and in the image of love. And, I don't know, that person may just well be you and me. Amen.
say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our God, the Almighty and Holy One, in whose light and wisdom we faithful walk, we pray to you this day. Your children come before you in faith and hope, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, that you have answered our fears with love. Give to us the faith to go where others dare not, to proclaim the vastness of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, that you aid those who work for justice and peace by giving them courage, vision, and strength. Enlist all people in the struggle for human dignity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for our church and its leaders. We pray today especially for our presiding bishop, Michael, our diocesan bishop Mary Ann, for assisting Bishop Chilton, for Sheila and Robert, our priests, and for all clergy and lay ministers who proclaim your word with words and actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations. We pray for United States leaders, the President and Cabinet, the Senate and House of Representatives, governors, mayors, and all who are in authority. May they make wise decisions and set aside all differences in order to work to make the lives of all people better, regardless of political affiliation, race, social, or economic status. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all among us who are ill, or depressed, or lonely. Pray today for those on our parish prayer list, Pete Anderson, Edie Brennan, Lossie Broadhead, the Burke family, Joe Chalmers, Charlotte Collins, Bill and Marianne Cook, Dorothy Dorn, Sophia Eldridge, Daniel Fitzsimmons, Molly Gray, Herb Greenhorn, Kim Jackson, Donna Overrocker, Derek Grice, Alfred Rascon, Gloria Roper, Skip Ruhlman, Stephanie Sanders, Bill and Kara Stapleton, Julie Stevens, Teresa Stubblefield, Jenny Wall, and Teresa Washington. We pray for those who have died. We pray especially for Jenny Mae Gregg, who was the greatly loved and honored grandma of a colleague of the, the Collins family, I'm sorry, Tony and Leslie King. In Lisa's own words, it was a peaceful transition, 99 years of living an extraordinary life and being a blessing to everyone she came in contact with. I have been so very lucky. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Danny Lang, Amy Brennan's cousin. For all these saints that have died, May they rest in peace in the arms of mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to God for all our blessings. Today we give thanks for all your children who are now mercifully recovering from COVID-19 and other illnesses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we bring these and all our needs to you, filled with confidence in the power of your love, wisdom, and mercy. Hear us and answer our prayers. 
We ask this through Christ, who is our risen Lord, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Franciscan three-part blessing. Even if you are home, say amen after the last part. May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, have truths and superficial relationships so that you may seek truth boldly and love deep within your heart. Amen. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may tirelessly work for justice, freedom, and peace among all people. Amen. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, or the loss of all they cherish, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and help transform their pain into joy. Amen. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you are able with God's grace to do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen.